Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Kevin and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. In this week's video we're exploring, it's a quick video, I just want to explore a couple of things we can do with the filter property that make your life a little bit easier. And this whole idea came to me from one of my new course members, Mel. We were talking over there and we mentioned in one of the lessons uh, with the hover effects we were looking at, needing to change colors, how, you know, it sucks having to find a second color when you already have one and you don't necessarily want to, especially if it's for something quick and easy to do. And he was using the filter and I always played with opacity and did some other stuff, but then that sort of got me thinking, we're gonna be exploring a few of those things that I thought about in this video. So here we are, I mean VS Code right here, uh, which is my code editor of choice. And we're gonna be looking at how we can add First, the how we can use filter for hover effects and other things like that. So there's a few different ones we're going to look at here. So we're going to do my A hover, and we'll do an A focus on here because we're being inclusive. And we want to do our filter on here now. So I'm going to just write filter. And then when we have our filter, we have a lot of different options. The first one we're going to explore is our brightness. And what this does is it lets you make things brighter or darker than the original. So in here, let's boost it by like quite a bit because I, I want to make sure that we can see the difference. I'm going to do 200%. So it's going to be 200% brighter than what it already was. And now when I go on hover, you can see it's really, really, it's, you know, it's really getting really bright. Or of course, you can go all the way down to zero. So zero would be black. So we could do like a 25% and it should darken it up a lot. And you can see it's still almost getting to black. And it really depends on the colors you're using. Um, how much the brightness and how far you can go with the brightness when it's either going to get to pure white or to pure black. What we could do here though, because I think that's much, a lot, we can you know do a 75% maybe. And you can see it's keeping the original color, but it is just darkening it. Or before I went really high, but if we did like 150% and we'll be able to see it here, now it's getting a little bit lighter, but it's keeping the original color in there. So I do think brightness is pretty neat in that we don't have to worry about exactly what the color is going to actually be. I used to use opacity a lot for this. So instead of doing something like that, I might do an opacity of 0.7 or something like that, um, which gives you a very similar effect if you want to get lighter. But if you want to get darker, you can't really use opacity because you can't make something more opaque <laughs> than 100%. So this is nice that we can push it in one direction or the other. And the other thing that's nice about using filter is there's other options to it. So if I did my filter, I'm gonna use something called hue rotate. If you know about the color wheel, you have, well, it's pretty much a wheel with your colors on it. So you can rotate around on that. And if you've ever used Photoshop and played with the hue and saturation, you know you can, if you take that and you move the hue thing, it sort of shifts all the colors. That's what hue rotate is doing. We're rotating colors around the wheel. Um, so if you did a very small one, let's do 50 degrees. That's actually kind of big, but we'll do a 50 degree shift in one direction. You'll see that it's getting into the green. So it's switching colors. And if I did minus 50, it will go the other way. And you can see it's pushing up into the pinks now. So we're shifting around on the hue. Now these changes, you might be going, well, that's kind of ugly, Kevin. It doesn't fit at all with your color scheme. And you're right, it doesn't. Um, but you could, you could stick with really small ones of say like 20 degrees or less. And it's still going to shift, but the shift will be much less. So there was getting pink, but it wasn't quite as noticeable. And of course we can rotate 20 degrees the other way and it sort of pushes into a darker, like more of a reddy orange, um, almost like a brownie color there. So, you know, something like that could be nice. It's not dark enough really. So I don't think it's a big enough shift, but it is something you could play with. Or where I think this gets more interesting is if you wanna go all the way to the other side, because 180 degrees on a wheel is halfway. And that's going to bring you to your complementary color. So you know it's going to work with your color scheme. If you know about colors and you've ever done anything with colors, you've heard of complementary colors and that it's the color that's opposite another one. And it means they always work together. So it's complete opposite on the color wheel, this cyan -y kind of color from the orange I have there. And maybe it's too extreme. You don't really like what it's doing, but it's just something to show you that it's a cool option where you don't actually have to go and find like an RGB or a hex code for it we can use our hue rotate or play around with our brightness and get different results. So I think that's really, really cool. Now, another place that I thought this could be super, super interesting is um, when we have dark backgrounds like this, because when you have a background color, one thing I always have said that can be really handy here is coming on and saying something, instead of color of pure white, I often say to do a color of RGBA and on there 255, 255, 255, and then like, a, I don't know, 0.7 or something like that, 
which lowers the opacity of it a little bit. It allows a little bit of that blue color to come through. So it lets us see the blue. So it makes the text fit in a little bit, but it does wash the text out a little bit. So while it's handy, and instead of doing that, of course, if you had white, um, another option you could do is your opacity, because I'm doing this directly on the paragraph. So like a 0.7 would give me the same result. It's gonna lower the opacity um, of the paragraph, because you can see here I have my dark BG body. I'm um, sorry about this, I am using SAS here, but this is the same as just writing dark BG body like that. And then, so I'm setting, and you know, let's, let's unnest it to make it a little bit more clear. There we go. So we could write it like that. So we have the white coming in. And so either you know, playing with the opacity or playing with an RGBA is a nice way to lower it. Um, now, one nice thing with using the opacity or the RGBA is if you go to black, it's going to be sort of similar the other way. I think the black works better here. You get a little bit of the blue coming in. So if we turn that off, we can see that the pure black, it's really strong on that. So it just, it takes that edge off. It allows a little bit of the original color in, which can be really nice and just makes things blend together a bit more but it's never perfect. Um, it's always, it pushes things the right direction, but I find that sometimes it's missing a little something when you do it this way. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna change my color here to the same as my background. So I am using a CSS custom property or CSS variable here. So when I save that, um, it disappears. My text is still there, but it's the same color as my background. But what we can do now is use a filter. So filter, and I'm gonna come in with brightness again, and whoop, on my brightness, I'm gonna bring it up to say 175%. I want it to get much, much, much brighter. And you can see that it is coming through. Maybe we'd even want more than that, 225. Um, now the color, I'm not a big fan of where it's got to. It's gotten so cyan -y. it's not the nicest to read, but, it, but it's still kind of cool that we can push colors up in that direction. It keeps some of the original color, but it's making it much, much brighter. So we still are getting that idea of keeping with the original color scheme without washing it out. And of course, if we did the same thing the other way, we could where we darken it up overall as well. And that one, once again, looks a little bit better than before. Um, if you are gonna boost it, I think I boosted it too much. I think let's try like a 175. I think that looks a little bit better. Um, but it's not, it's still not super easy to read. It, it looks okay, but it, we can make it pop just a little bit more by shifting the hue. If you want to combine filters, it's kind of awkward because so many CSS properties, like if you have multiple backgrounds, you're comma separating it. If you have multiple box shadows, you have to comma separate them. Multiple filters, you just space. <laughs> hue rotates. Uh, it's a CSS thing where, if, is it a space, is it, do you space separate them or do you comma separate them? And who knows? It's try one. If it doesn't work, you try the other one. Um, so in here, if you do, you know, once again, I could do like 180 degrees, but while I think that worked on my link, it doesn't really work down here. Um, but what it can do is if you do a small shift, so say we do 10 degrees, um, it's actually changed. The difference is really, really small. Let's go up to 20, um, even though I don't think, you can see it's going more into like a natural blue instead of that cyan -y color. And I'm going to go to 30, even though, or yeah, I'm going to go to 30. It's going to be too much now. Um, but you can see it's pushing more and more towards blues and purples. Um, so it's sort of, now I've gone too far, so it's making it break out. So I'd probably stick with like a 10 or a 20. It should be really, really subtle. And maybe now I can actually boost this back up to over 200. Um, and the colors sort of fit together. And of course you could do this the other way too. Negative 20, it's not going to work probably because it goes more into the greens. It doesn't look terrible either. Um, but anyway, it's just a fun way that you can use these options of filter to try and play around with how things look overall. Because I do think that it's a nice way to be able to shift colors without having to worry about grabbing colors from a color scheme tool. Um, and in general, especially with the brightness one and then playing around with some of these other settings, you can definitely start coming into some like decent color schemes without having to stress too much about where, um, where things are going. You can see I am fiddling around a little bit with this one now, but I'm pretty happy with where that got compared to where it was with the white because the white got a little bit washed out. I find that fits in better. And whether you're doing a big shift like that on your hover or if you're switching it over for something like the brightness, because I think the brightness one actually works really well um, and works better than opacity just because you have the choice of either going lighter or darker with your color. And it is pretty neat that you can do that so easily and you have such fine control over it because you can play around with the different numbers. So once again, a big thank you to Mel for just suggesting this. And it's one of the things I love the most about teaching is actually when I learn new things myself. And I've known about the filter and usually I'm using it for things like blur and a lot of the other really cool stuff that it can do. Um, and this really got me thinking about 
other ways that you could use it. I'm so used to always doing just opacity or basic things like that. You sort of get in a groove of what you're used to doing. And sometimes when you're dealing with new students, whether it's in my classroom or now in this Slack channel where there's just full of people exploring CSS, they come up with the coolest ideas. If you don't already know about the course that I'm talking about with the Slack channel, if you haven't heard, I have launched a new course. It is called the Responsive Web Design Bootcamp. It is a course that takes you through the CSS fundamentals to thinking responsibly. We dive into Flexbox, we dive into Grid. It's a course I'm super, super proud of. We build several projects throughout it, a couple of three-page websites, a splash page, some card components. There's over 15 hours of content and over 170 videos. It is a really big course and it's over on Scrimba, which is this, this cool interactive platform you can literally pause the video and type in the video player, in the code. I don't know how they do it. I think it's amazing. Um, I've put together all of that content for it. And I'm still amazed every time I do it and I start typing and things just start working. So it's a really, really cool platform. If you would like to know more about the course, I have put a link down in the description that is it the post they put that goes into detail about everything that is covered in it. There's also the link, of course, to the course itself. If you want to, you can leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to answer your questions. And right now, it is on sale for $29. That is going up to $99. It's over 70% off. And that sale will be ending on August the 30th. So get it while you can. There's only a week left until the sale is over. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a couple of things along the way. If you did, let me know about them in the comments or if you have any other ideas or thoughts on how you could use Filter to do fun and cool stuff or if you have other ways that you'd use it, I'd love to know about them down below. I'll probably be doing a deeper dive into the filter sometime in the future where we explore all of the properties in there, but I was just so excited about this one little thing and a few ideas that popped into my head with it that I, I just wanted to share it really quickly with you guys. A really big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here. Thank you guys very, very much. I really appreciate the support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.